I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com, Chapter 10. In this particular module, we will consider the assignment of cost to property, plant, and equipment. And so let's start out recognizing some principles. Property, plant, and equipment is a separate category on a classified balance sheet. It typically follows the long-term investment section, and it includes the physical assets that are deployed in the operation of the business. For example, land, buildings, and equipment. Recognize that idle land or land that's held for speculation or other idle facilities would probably be listed in the long-term investments category. Property, plant, and equipment is for the active, tangible, productive assets used by the business. Items are usually listed by expected life, and so in this case we show land listed first. It has an indefinite or permanent life, followed by buildings, which have a fairly long life, but certainly not permanent, and then equipment, which might have a much shorter life, three, five, ten years, for example. I've shown each of the depreciable categories, building and equipment, net of their related accumulated depreciation. Some companies may report just a single number for property, plant, and equipment, and leave this level of detail to the footnotes in the financial statement. Moving on to consideration of cost assignment, there's a term you should be aware of, capital expenditures. Those are the costs that are ordinary and necessary to get the items in place and in condition for their intended use. It would include the purchase price for the asset, plus cost related to permits, freight, ordinary installation, initial setup, calibration, programming, other such normal costs. Other expenditures that are not ordinary and necessary or benefit only the immediate period should be expenses incurred, for example, repair of abnormal damage caused during installation. Here's an example. Pecklot Corporation purchased a new lathe. The lathe had a list price of $90,000. Pecklat managed to negotiate a discount of 10% on the purchase. Pecklat also paid freight and installation cost of $5,000. Let's look at the equipment here. First of all, $90,000 is not the price, that's the list price. We would back out the 10% discount we negotiate and say, well, we got $81,000 purchase price for the item, but we also had to incur $5,000 of uh, installation cost. So our total equipment would be shown at 86,000. I have a debit to equipment of 86,000. However, during installation, we damaged the spindle on the lathe and it had to be replaced for $2,000. That was not ordinary and necessary. We're gonna charge that off as a repair expense of $2,000. So our total outlay of 88,000 is attributed 86,000 to equipment and 2,000 to repair costs. Moving on to interest cost. Interest cost paid to finance the purchase price of property, plant, and equipment is to be expensed. It is not a capital expenditure. However, interest incurred on funds borrowed to finance the construction of property, plant, and equipment may be incurred. These rules are fairly complex and typically covered in intermediate accounting courses. In general, though, it's actual interest cost incurred during the active construction period. Nothing more than that would be capitalized. The rest of the interest cost would be expensed. What about training costs? Well, typically not a capital expenditure. They're generally expense. The training is deemed to be something that attaches to the employee and not the property, plant, and equipment. We might have an exception for that if it's a very specialized training. Usually when the training is company specific and benefits many periods, so it may be a nuclear power plant where you're training operators on the operation of just that particular facility that's not perhaps a transportable skill and is unique to a particular location. You might make a case for capitalization, but generally we're not going to be capitalizing the uh, training cost. Let's look at land and land improvements. Land costs usually include the cost of the land plus title fees, legal fees, survey costs, zoning fees. Preparation costs such as grading and draining the land are also included. But recognize that there are also costs that are not land, land improvements. This would include the cost of parking lots, sidewalks, landscaping, irrigation systems, and similar expenditures. Those are typically capitalized, but as a separate asset, uh, the rationale is that improvements, unlike land, wear out and would be depreciated. You would need to eventually replace a sprinkler system or landscaping, for example. Now, sometimes assets might be purchased in a lump sum. A company may buy an existing facility that consists of land, buildings, and equipment. The purchase price must be allocated to those individual components. So here, the Bensel Corporation acquired a facility for $2 million. The facility consisted of land, buildings, and equipment that had respective fair values of $500, $750, and $1,250,000. So we got a bargain purchase. The individual pieces add up to $2,500,000, but we were able to buy the facility for 80% of that amount, or $2 million. And so in our calculations, we would simply take the, the estimated values of each component times the proportion of the value in total that was reflected by the purchase price, or 80 cents on the dollar, and we would come up with the cost assignment to the individual assets. This cost assignment uh, uh, would be very typical. Uh, recognize that it would be appropriate for buying 
assets but not businesses. Business, if, it, if the asset package is deemed to be a business, we would default to our business combination accounting considerations. Additionally, I should point out that on an international basis, uh, whereas in the U.S., under U.S. generally accepted accounting principles, we would assign $750,000 to the building. Globally, it's very common to encounter a component type allocation. So you might look at a building and say, well, it's a building, sure enough, but it's got a, a roof that has a separate life, a heating and air conditioning system with a separate life, and so on. So there's actually more allocation of costs in international accounting standards than there is in U.S. GAAP. So we've come up with our cost assignment of $2 million, and here's the journal entry to reflect that. The credit to cash of two million results in debits to land, buildings, and equipment for those respective amounts, 80% of the fair value of each. Recognize that professional judgment is required to make these allocations. The determination of fair value of the components was given in my illustration. As a practical matter, that can involve complexity, subjectivity, a significant amount of professional judgment. Uh, the initial allocations do have major impacts on future depreciation patterns. For example, if we had allocated a different amount to land and buildings, we would have future depreciation expense that differs because land's not depreciable. So it is an important allocation decision. There are also materiality considerations. Some long-lived asset expenditures are relatively minor in value. If we buy a trash can or telephones or pictures on the wall, it may not be worth the cost to account for those items. We might expense those immediately for expediency's sake. Uh, many businesses expense small cost is incurred, the record keeping cost of capitalizing and subsequently depreciating these assets over their useful life certainly can exceed the benefit of doing so.